Hey guys, this week I thought I'd talk about something I've been doing a fair bit of lately and that is metal shaping and the tools I use to do it. Alright guys, uh, so as a lot of you may have been following, you've seen uh, the work I've been doing on my Datsun 240Z in the last few weeks, um, doing a lot of panel beating, metal work, shaping up, repair panels, etc. And uh, I've had a few questions about how I do it. Now, I'm not a panel beater, I have very little experience, but this is stuff I use at home, sort of DIY stuff. Basically, for all the panel beating on my 911, all I had was this one dolly, and uh, I found this was quite useful for a lot of it, and, and just basically a panel beating hammer, and they're really cheap from the auto parts store. Um, because I knew I was going to be doing a lot more on the Datsun, I thought I'd uh, I went and got a couple of others. They're just handy in different shapes to be able to use sharp edges or try and pick the right curve you need or whatever. So lots of different edges and that's basically what the difference is for all these things. They're all quite heavy so it gives you something to sort of hit against and um, tend to work very well. There's also... Um, this is uh, another method, it's for slapping, but I also use it as a dolly itself. It's a little bit light for a dolly, but it's handy to get into panels where you can't necessarily get behind a, for example, in my doors, uh, getting in behind the, um, the side intrusion bar. I can sort of slide that in there and then use that as a little bit of uh, something to, uh, to hang on to. Now, some of the different methods I, I use to get different shapes. Uh, a simple one is if I want to get like a like a, a curved piece of metal. What sometimes I'll use is I've got a piece of timber on the ground, and using the round of the ball paint hammer. Basically, that method seems to just stretch the metal in the center and, uh, and create the well and the curve that uh, I, I want to use. A lot of other stuff is I might just um, bend the metal by hand over uh, a piece. I mean, often if I'm trying to do a large sheet for the door or something like that, I want to try and keep it reasonably flat, just a nice even curve. So often it's just a little tiny bit of hand bending is what I've been doing and uh, it seems to work. Now, one of the tools that a lot of uh, sheet metal guys will generally have in any sheet metal shop is a press brake. Now, I don't have one of them, and basically, uh, for those who don't understand what it is, is basically, it's a tool that can bend sheet metal. So, um, what I use as an alternative is uh, a couple of sheets of angle iron in my vise and, uh, and do things that way. So I clamp my sheet of metal where I want it, usually mark my line uh, between my two bits of angle iron, and... Um, clamp it up hard with the vise and fold it over and sometimes I can either tap it down with a hammer um, that's fine if you've only got a fine edge and it doesn't really matter if it gets warped but the trouble is is when you tap it down with a hammer you get dents in it all the way along so what I often find is I'll just get a lump of wood from behind and push in the back of the piece and fold it over evenly so I get a sort of reasonably even distribution along the, uh, the piece of metal and get a reasonably smooth, neat curve. One of the issues you might have with a longer piece is the further you come along your angle iron pieces away from the vise, they lose tension and um, obviously when you're trying to push on the sheet metal, the sheet metal is actually pushing them apart, so they'll actually flex. So what I do is I get some clamps and clamp down the further end and clamp them up tight so that they don't move and you still get a nice even seam all the way along. I actually find the bench vise quite handy for a lot of reasons. Sometimes I just use it like an anvil and I've, there's uh, lots of curved surfaces that uh, I might use or sharp corners and I'll use this to just uh, hammer the, the metal over whatever corner and shape I need to try and make my uh, custom piece. Another little trick um, I picked up along the way is um, if I have a ball paint hammer, I can lock the hammer in the vise, then I've got a nice round head there in the vise and uh, I can just stick my sheet over the top and uh, shape it accordingly. Another thing you might have seen me doing was uh, working on this headlight bucket. Now, I found that um, none of my dollies would fit up inside this nose piece to actually do the work I needed, so you had to think a little bit outside the box and I just used this um, socket handle 
that I can sit down like so and then I can tap away. So in the end I really think uh, at least home DIY metalworking tools it comes down to using your imagination. Um, sometimes a block of wood might be good, sometimes it's the proper dollies. Hopefully some of these tips have been handy, uh, got you thinking about things anyway and um, yeah just give it a go. Alright guys, well uh, these are my favourite tools for this week so um, as always please like and subscribe to Home Built by Jeff and uh, I'll see you next time.